You better show up in your place tonight before you call it a night. I absolutely need your assistance in cleaning my bathrooms because at my age, I can't risk inhaling any darn bleach. And don't think you're off the hook yet. The guest plates and silverware also need a good polishing. Move your behind pronto. I ain't got all day to waste waiting for you to get your act together. Chop, chop. Hey, Mrs. Anderson. I think there's been a mix-up or something. Nicholas and I just finished checking out of our hotel, and we're actually on our way to the airport right now for our honeymoon. So, unfortunately, we won't be able to swing by your place and clean your bathroom. Is this some kind of prank or something? Well, I never joke, my dear. Don't you dare undermine me like that ever again. I have zero tolerance for it. I'm giving you directions as an elder of this family. All you need to do is say yes, ma'am, and come do exactly as I tell you. Tisk tisk, young people these days, lacking any common sense whatsoever. I understand your point of view, but as I mentioned before, Nicholas and I are just about to leave for our honeymoon trip. So, unfortunately, we won't be able to assist you with the bathroom cleaning at this time. Listen up, because I'm about to set things straight. As the newest member of this family, you should take some initiative and find something productive to do by now. But hey, I'll let it slide just this once. I get it. You're probably still caught up in the excitement of your wedding. Well, newsflash, my dear daughter-in-law. You're practically my personal assistant now. So forget about your honeymoon for a moment. I've already told Nicholas to cancel the flight. So stop being so naive and get your butt over here right away. You what? You made Nicholas cancel our honeymoon? Why would you do that? Why would Nicholas do that? That's right. My son is just the epitome of perfection, isn't he? It's amazing how easily he falls for my little tricks. A few crocodile tears and a phony prescription from the doctor and bam, he completely buys into my act and decides to cancel the utterly ridiculous honeymoon plans just so he can stay home and be a mama's boy. It's truly remarkable, isn't it? You know what? This is just too much to handle. I'm going to talk to Nicholas about all of this because I'm pretty sure there's some sort of misunderstanding going on here. Oh, sure. Go ahead and bother him for his precious confirmation if you want to get an earful from my son. He's not some fool who wastes his hard-earned money on frivolous stuff like honeymoons. Back in my day, we didn't even have this so-called honeymoon nonsense. So think twice before you bring it up again. Hey, Nicholas. Heading to the airport now. You mentioned some extra hotel fees to handle, so I'm going ahead. But seriously, when are you going to join me? Well, about that, something unexpected came up. Work-related stuff. Gotta handle it. You know how it goes. Can't really help it, unfortunately. Oh, really? So, when do you think you can come? Hey, Carolyn, listen up. It's not easy for me to say this, but I don't think we can go on our honeymoon as planned. My boss just called me. And there are major issues with the new project that require my immediate attention. This project is make or break for my company. And if I mess it up, we might lose a crucial business partner. I hope you understand, babe. Wait, are you really telling me this? We've been planning our dream honeymoon for months. And I thought your boss had already approved your time off. Look, Nicholas, I trust you. So just be honest with me. What's the real deal here? What's the true reason behind this sudden change in plans? Oh, really? What's with the attitude? I already told you the truth, but I guess you're too blind to see it. The fact is, we can't go on the damn honeymoon because I have important work to handle. A supportive wife would get that instead of grilling me like I'm some criminal. I just had a little chat with your dear mom. And guess what? She spilled the beans. She's the one who made you cancel our flights, didn't she? Huh? What are you talking about? I've got some juicy news for you, your lovely mom. Guess what she did? 
She played the sick card to manipulate you into canceling our long-awaited honeymoon. Can you believe it? She wanted you to stay home with her instead. How? How did you find out about that? Well, well. Your dear mama spilled the beans herself. She had no problem confessing the truth to me. So tell me, what do you have to say for yourself now, huh? Wait, hold up. Why on earth would she pull a stunt like that? Hmm, maybe she was just worried and wanted to know when I'd be coming over to her place. I mean, I get it. It's understandable in a way. So, you're admitting it now? You actually canceled our flight just because your mom wanted it? Without even bothering to consult me first? Is that what you're telling me? Well, I mean, what could I do? Mom told me she's sick and she really needs me there for her. You know I can't just say no, right? I'm her precious son and I gotta be there for her, no matter what. Just think about it. If you were in my shoes, could you honestly enjoy the honeymoon while your own sweet mama's struggling with illness all by herself? Only heartless monsters would even think of doing that to their own flesh and blood. So yeah, I had to make the tough call. Mom's my number one, always. Hey, it wasn't a honeymoon for you alone. It was ours. I even paid half the expenses. You can't make a decision by yourself to cancel it like that. Why wouldn't you discuss it with me first? It's my mom we're talking about here. There was absolutely no time to waste. It was an emergency. I couldn't just sit around and do nothing. I had to spring into action and be there for her. You know how much she means to me, right? She's like my whole world. So yeah, when it's about my amazing mom, there's no hesitation. I had to be there for her ASAP. Oh wow. Is that so? Except, let me tell you something. It's all just a big charade cooked up by your conniving mother. Don't believe me? Fine. I'll gladly show you the damning evidence right here in the form of text messages. She's been manipulating the situation and pulling the strings. Trying to control everything. Stop trying to paint my mom as the bad guy here, okay? She's the one who took you in. Treated you like her own daughter. And this is how you repay her? It's just a honeymoon. We can totally have it whenever we want. But let me ask you this. If something were to happen to my mom, could you do anything about it? I highly doubt it. So how about you zip it and be a good obedient wife, alright? Show some respect to the woman who's done so much for us. Got it? Hey Caroline, did you actually manage to squeeze an answer out of my son? <laughs> oh my god! I can't believe Nicholas had the audacity to cancel the flight. And you? You're the one to blame for this mess. It's all on you. How could you have possibly influenced him to take such a ridiculous decision? This is an absolute disaster. I can't believe you've ruined everything with your meddling and manipulative ways. Thanks a lot for sabotaging our plans. Obviously, because he respects my wishes more than yours. I am his mother after all, you know. I carried him around for nine months, gave birth to him, and raised him his whole life. Besides, he's always been a good mama's boy. He's never once said no to me, ever. All I had to tell him was that I was sad and hurt to have to see him go on a trip to Italy when I myself have never even set foot outside of this country. Nicholas, that sweet boy of mine, called your airline and cancelled your tickets then and there. He even vowed to take me somewhere even better soon. He didn't tell you about that? No matter. I'll expect you here within the next three hours. I can't believe this. I don't even know what to say. I'm at a complete loss for words. I can't believe I fell for Nicholas's macho act. If I had known he was such a mama's boy, I would never have said yes to his proposal. Let alone a first date. Ugh. He used to make such a big fuss about how much he hates mama's boys. He used to call out his friends at the mere mention of their mothers. Was it all an act? I knew something was off. He seemed to take it too far at times. Wow. You two are just the greatest showmen. Mother and son duo, aren't you? Whatever happened to this sweet, warm, welcoming new mother-in-law that I came to love and appreciate? It seems as though she disappeared as soon as the wedding vows were read. Well, what can I say? 
I needed help around the house, and what better candidate is there than a daughter-in-law? You were such an easy target. The lowest hanging fruit if I ever saw one. Especially one as eager as you to please everyone you meet for the first time. It was a no-brainer, really. If I'd shown my true colors from the beginning, would you have married Nicholas? Of course not. Like you said, you wouldn't even have gone on a date. Don't take it personally, Caroline dear. It's all for the sake of this family. Plus, if you're ever lucky enough to bear a son, like me, you'll be very handsomely rewarded later on when you <laughs> yourself become a mother-in-law. Isn't that something exciting to look forward to? You saw about the cycle of life for women. You can't fight it. So, come on over so it can start giving you lessons on everything from scratch. On how to be a good housewife. Housewife lessons. What is this? The 40s? I can do things around the house just fine. Thank you very much. I don't see why I would need lessons from you. Is your house different from any other house? Is yours an alien ship? Hush. You don't know the first thing about how this household runs. Each household has their own traditions, recipes, and rules. I'm sure your mama had her own way of making potatoes, didn't she? Now it's time for you to learn how the Anderson women make potatoes. It's your responsibility to carry on our family's ways now that you're one of us. You have a long way to go. I'm afraid. I've actually had your potatoes. They're too lumpy for my taste. And if you're such a stickler about family traditions, why offer up the secrets to an outsider like me? Why don't you go and set up a nice little mother and son cooking session with your precious Nicholas? I really can't agree with the old fashioned way of life where the woman has to do all the housework. Those days are way behind us, Gabriella. I went to college just like your son. And I have a career just like your son. I'm not about to come home from a long day at work to cook and clean and coddle a husband who won't lift a finger. Oh, don't tell me you're planning on keeping your job. That's nonsense. You're a married woman now. You can go out and work like a man. Absolutely unacceptable. Your duties are at home now. Be a good wife to your husband and bear him as many children as you can. Besides... It's not like your job makes as much as Nicholas's. What are you, a secretary? I bet you make coffee and smile at business associates. That is not a job. You can always do that here for me and your father-in-law. I actually make a lot more than Nicholas. I have two degrees from a university way better ranked than Nicholas's alma mater. I resent your assumption about my job. Please refrain from belittling my hard-earned position in life. I worked really hard to get where I am now. That's quite enough now. I don't need to be arguing with you. I'm your mother-in-law. You need to obey me. Hang on to every word like it's the gospel. Did your parents teach you nothing of value? Tsk, tsk. Now, stop yapping about. Quit your job. Come over to my house and sit down so I can teach you your place, or else. No thank you, I'll pass. That sounds like the worst deal ever. What? Have you lost your mind? Do you not understand the gravity of the situation here? You're on my last nerve, young missy. If you don't want to become a divorcee the day after your wedding, you better do what I say. Mmm, that actually doesn't sound so terrible. It doesn't sound terrible at all, actually. Nonsense. You have no idea what you're saying. Now is not the time to be bluffing. I'm not stupid. A woman's value plummets once she's divorced. She's beyond damaged goods. Men really do age like fine wine. Their value keeps going up and up as they mature into their own style. Make more money, accumulate more assets, etc., etc. But women, it's like driving a brand new car off the lot. You lose over half its value the moment it hits the pavement. You really have no idea how the world works, do you? Thank goodness I'm here now to guide you through it all. You're so lucky. I think it's you who doesn't know how things work. 
at least in this world, in this day and age, sure, Nicholas and I had a wedding ceremony and a reception. And sure, we had over 200 guests witness our vows. We haven't submitted any papers to the city office yet. We were going to do that after our honeymoon. I didn't want to deal with all the stress and waiting in line until after I had something fun and relaxing first. So technically, Nicholas and I are not married. Legally, we're just two buddies who just had an expensive party. What? Nicholas told me you two were going to City Hall to make an official first before the wedding. It was last week. I'm sure of it. You're right. We were going to do that the other day. But something urgent came up at my lame job, and I had to go on a last-minute business trip. So we had to postpone it. Man, what a stroke of luck. I'm already pretty upset about having to break things off with Nicholas right after a big expensive wedding. But to think that I was this close to actually becoming a Duforce? Yikes. I must have some guardian angel somewhere watching over me. That is absurd. Why wouldn't you tell me that? Why wouldn't Nicholas tell me that? Oh look, I think I might have come off a little aggressive. I must have been too eager to assimilate you into our family that my words came out a bit harsh. I do apologize, dear. It was never my intention to scare you or treat you like a slave. No, I would never do that. I wouldn't dream of it. I just felt this overwhelming responsibility to prep you to be the best darn Mrs. Anderson there ever was. You and I got off on the wrong foot. That's all there is to it. Please, let's just pretend this conversation never happened. There's no need to tell Nicholas, right? He probably even booked a different itinerary for your honeymoon. He would have had a plan B in tow. Let's forgive and forget, shall we? No, I can't just forget. While I do prefer you like this, with your tail between your legs, I can't pretend nothing happened today, no. That would be the dumbest thing. In my short 30 years of life, if I've learned one thing, it would be that once a cheater is always a cheater. I guess in this case you didn't cheat, but you get what I mean. Garbage is garbage. There's no point in trying to fix something that's already been discarded. Are you comparing me to a piece of garbage? How dare you? I am your mother-in-law. Well, technically you're nothing to me. Remember, Nicholas and I aren't legally married. So you're literally nothing but some old lady who tries to threaten me and force me into doing hard labor. It's laughable, really. Who does that? I'll have someone come pick up my stuff from my apartment. Maybe I'll find someone to sublet so I don't have to have any more ties to anything concerning the great Anderson. Since you seem to make all the decisions for Nicholas, you can arrange something to get his stuff out of there yourself. I'm getting myself the hell out of this mess. Wait, Caroline. Let me explain. Just like that, the day after my big wedding, I had to call it quits with my would-be husband. Of course I was able to avoid being labeled a divorcee, thanks to my impromptu business trip and a thing called an annulment. Nicholas came begging for my forgiveness to take him back, saying it was all a silly misunderstanding between his mother and myself. I did not hesitate to tell him not in a million years. So there I was trying my hardest to get back on track with my life and work again, when Gabriella reached out to me again out of the blue. Hello? Caroline, dear, how are you? Well, I hope. I just couldn't help myself. I had to message you on a day like this. Today? Works the first anniversary of you and Nicholas's wedding day. Do you remember? You know, I still look at you and Nicholas's wedding photos every once in a while. They never cease to bring a smile to my face. How absolutely gorgeous you looked. And how happy we all were that day, huh? It just breaks my heart to see you drifting farther and farther away from us, Caroline. Whatever happened to us? We were about to become one happy family. Mrs. Anderson, you've got to be joking this time. You text me out of the blue after a year to what? Play victim? What is wrong with you? Leave me alone. 
I'm already on edge because I'm not a summer person and it's like 100 degrees outside. Besides, I'm at work and I'm extremely busy. You do remember my lame job, don't you? Oh, you have not changed one bit, have you? You still have a way of talking like you want to bite someone's head off. Oh, how I miss that. It's a compliment. God knows women these days need some spunk. You couldn't imagine the repercussions I had to go through after Nicholas and his father both blamed me for ruining your marriage? They wouldn't let me live it down. Boo-hoo. Cry me a river, won't you? Look, I have to get back to work. Goodbye. Why don't you give it a good long thought? I'm sure you can find it in your heart to get back together with Nicholas. Can't you? You two were so very much in love for over two years. You can't pretend that never happened all because of an old woman's rants. You see, Nicholas still hasn't gotten over you, Caroline. You would barely speak to me anymore because he's still so angry with me. He says you were the best thing that ever happened to him and that I ruined it all. Will you at least just think about it? Give it a good thought. The answer is no. I'm already seeing someone else. If you must know, his name is Kevin. And I met him when I went on another business trip through my lame job. Of course he knows all about my failed first marriage. He loves me regardless. You are already in a new serious relationship. So soon? I don't take you for a tramp, but what do I know? That's quite impressive to say the least. It's only been a year since you broke things off with my Nicholas. How could you have found someone so soon? Did you go on Tinder? Haha! <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Not that there's anything wrong with Tinder. But no, I didn't. Did you expect me to become a nun or something after a man-child like Nicholas? As if. If I had to describe you Andersons as an animal, you'd be donkeys. And my fiancé Kevin and his family would be like diamond unicorns. Kevin's parents are extremely wealthy, and they act like it too. They even sent Kevin to etiquette school as a kid. They are pure class. My future in-laws. You wouldn't know anything about that, though. What a shallow bimbo you are. You think they'll be any different? How do you know they won't drop their nice act as soon as you say, I do? I'm not the minority here. My mother-in-law was very strict, too. It's just how things are. I know because I've seen how they treat servers at restaurants. I'm talking four, five-star restaurants. Oh, and did I mention they bought me and Kevin a 4,000 square foot house by the lake? Under both our names, of course. Besides, they already have a butler and housekeeping staff, so they won't need a daughter-in-law to do their bidding. Anyway, like I said already, I have to get back to work. Don't ever call me or text me again. Goodbye. Fortunately, Gabriella and the rest of the Andersons got the message loud and clear and never dared to contact me again. I was finally able to enjoy my real honeymoon with the love of my life, Kevin. Italy is a truly beautiful country full of great food, music, and local people. After we came back from the dreamlike 10-day honeymoon, Kevin's parents and sister had decorated our new house with garlands and balloons to welcome us into the family. I would have loved to invite them over for a small dinner, but they were busy living their own lives, traveling and golfing. Kevin's lovely parents also respect our privacy and don't bother us with pointless family gatherings except on holidays. Although I really love my new in-laws as my own parents, so I wouldn't have mind seeing them more often. I finally found a place where I belonged. It's with Kevin and our newly adopted cat named Umbrella. Oh, and it's a secret that I'm nine weeks pregnant. I'm looking forward like never before to a future that's full of hope and wonder. If this baby is a boy, I vow to him and myself that I will never, ever be a horrible mother-in-law to his future wife.